Hey guys, it's here bringing you another video. Welcome back to another Challenger Spectate Korea edition continued. So yes, we're staying on Korea and we're watching what is currently the rank one Korea player, uh, Hunt Eand One. Uh, I don't know specifically what pro this is, but they play from they play in Dominus Esports. I am streaming while I do this, so if anybody knows what, who's watching, who this is, if that is a pro, like that's actually their name, I have no idea. Let me know. Uh, we're watching Mordekaiser today. Um, Mordekaiser has generally like always been on, I'd say the, well, he's been very strong at stages, but at the moment I'd say he's on the boundary of like strength. And Lynx99, thank you very much for 10 months of Prime. Um, but he's on like the boundary. He's not oppressive. He's not overpowered. He's there and you can play him, but he's like, I don't know. He's not that pick that you're insanely scared of all the time. Uh, but this game, he's against a Malphite. And the weird thing, obviously, Malphite normally is, you know, picked into AD champions. So it does beg the question, who picked into who? I, I doubt a Malphite picked into a Mordekaiser. That would be a bit weird. So I'm guessing the Malphite was like, I'm just playing Malphite. And then Morda's like, I'll pick something AP. I'm guessing. So there's that. And uh, yeah, we'll have a little watch. So the game itself has Lee Sin jungle, which, you know, Lee Sin is still, he's fallen off a little bit, but in servers that dedicate themselves to mechanical play, such as Korea, such as China, especially, they still rate Lee Sin very heavily because he's all about mechanics. Katarina mid uh, with running, by the way, Ignite Teleport. That's very aggressive. Uh, and then obviously the Lucian Lulu on that team too. And then on Mordor's team, Hecarim Jungle, who's Hecarim seems to be a quite a strong champion at the moment. Um, it's Silas, again, strong champion with a Draven and Thresh. Um, generally, Dravens you only see when they main it. So I don't know if this is a Draven main. Obviously, if you look on the sides, most of the people's names, or like actually not most, but some of the people's names are like the boxes with the question mark in it. Obviously, that is when it's built from Korean characters, and I don't have the Korean um, alphabet installed on my Lee client. So yeah, apparently, um, Lucian has just informed me that this Mordekaiser is called Natural for Dominus Esports. So apparently, that is the pro himself so i don't know anything really I, like are they in worlds i've got no idea um I, I presume they would be if they've got the rank one korea player right now but you never know korea play, like pro play is vastly different to solo queue as we mentioned many times so so far the mordekaiser has complete lane control as you'd probably expect malphite he's not a, obviously a bad champion but malphite's more there to be more of a denying champion more than a aggressor champion where mord i would say actually he can do both um, Maud can do both aggression play when he's in a good matchup and he can play quite defensively. You know, Mordekaiser as a champion can also deny objectives that, you know, if um, a Baron or a Dragon is being done, Mordekaiser can just choose to ult the enemy jungler to take their smite away from the equation. So that's quite a defensive thing to do if, you, if it's not the priority target to kill, but it's like a decision, which is obviously a good thing to do. Um, so just vast, like, pushing in is what the Mordekaiser seems to be going for. A little bit, you know, looking for these fights. But you can actually see Malphite's mana pool is going down quite fast. Um, just having to try and deal with the AoE wave clear that a Mordekaiser has. Constantly going into the tower. And Malphite can't get a lot of this farm. Um, because he has to use so much mana. So, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Twitch chat's been trying to make me laugh. Stop. Um, so item build for the Mord, by the way, because he's against a tanky thing, wouldn't be surprised if he does the Leandri first. He could do Riley, possibly. Um, but obviously we will see. Okay, specifically Vixie is trying to make me laugh. Is that better? God damn it. But uh, let me know, by the way, if you're watching this video, what do you guys think of Mordekaiser in the comments below? Because I, I actually know he is somewhat of a controversial champion. Um, some people really dislike this champ. Like, a lot. Um, so let me know if that's you. Are you one of these people that, like, really hates him? Uh, are you somebody that misses the old Mordekaiser too? But, uh, yeah. But, uh, we'll see. So, farm difference at the moment is 11, which is not bad at 5 minutes. Malphite is going back, probably needs to get that mana pool back. 
Um, and Maud's just going to continue power of chain farming. Maud doesn't need to go back right now. He has not used his one health potion that he started the game with. But he's going to choose to. Uh, probably just to get a bit of item. Goldwise has got 1300 gold. Just over. Malphite's got his bammies. Four AoE wave clear. And Maud... Wow. That's aggressive. Teleport bot lane. Flanking the enemy bot lane. They had no idea. Obviously, replays are somewhat bugged. That's why we didn't even see the teleport. And Morda picks one kill. And Dra um, Lucian having to try and escape. Running into a Draven. Gets himself killed as well. Really nice play by Mordekaiser. Going for that, you know, flank. Uh, and that's one thing we've always said now with watching Korea. Um, more than like EU West and stuff. Koreans are way... Like way more likely to go for early teleport roams than anywhere I've seen. Like, we have seen mid laners teleport bot lane at level 2. Like, it's just so... Again, it's aggressive in its playstyle, but it's also risky. I think that's the word to use. It's a risky playstyle because that mod had a really good lead on Malphite. If that play didn't work, you're just giving Malphite a way back into the game. You know, Malphite's caught up a bunch in farm. He's also got a tower plate. So if Mordekaiser got nothing in bot lane, or if that play went bad, suddenly Malphite would be in the lead. But obviously the play did go well. Uh, and yeah, the replay doesn't show passive, unfortunately, for Mord. So do remind yourself there will be a big AoE circle around Mord. There's nothing I can do about it. Replays have unfortunately been bugged for a little while now, and it's just not been Riot's priority to fix them, I guess. Just be happy that they're working in general. But, uh, yeah. So, Luchin just told me, apparently, um, the, the, the team that this, this player's on, Natural, uh, his team went, what, 1-15 and 15 in summer qualifiers. So, 1 win, 15 losses. Is that correct? Also, aggression play by Maud. Going aggressive, flashing over the wall after the Lee Sin flash. Ring of Ring of Rosies is happening. Lee Sin's gonna try and escape. Doesn't manage to get off the escape and will go down to the Maud. Um, so again, he's looking for those invades by himself with no vision in the enemy jungle. But that's just like the confidence. That's the, you know, the, the aggression that good players have. And obviously being rank one, solo queue Korea, this dude is pretty aggressive, pretty confident. Um, and also, you know, the Malphite had just gone back. Maybe Malphite could have been up that blue buff, but Mordecai's is like, ah, he's not going to be there. Um, well, actually, I say Malphite went back. I don't think he did. Malphite is holding not nearly a thousand gold. So, I, yeah, I don't know where the Malphite was. Maybe just chilling under his tower or something. But uh, this lane so far, you could say, has been fairly dominant for Mord. But I, what I would also say, as someone that obviously mains top lane, there's not much a, a Malphite can do to a Mord, completely, to be honest. Um... You know, it, it, Malphite counters AD champions. Mordekaiser's mainly AP. Uh, Malphite's tanky, as well as do, doing decent damage. And the AoE wave clear that Mord has over Malphite in the early game. The Mord just can't catch up. So there's that. Um, someone's saying, why is Malphite going Comet but seems to be going tank? Uh, you always run Comet on Malphite. There's nothing better than it. Um, because even with tank Malphite, it gives you a little bit of lane pressure. Uh, you can run, like, Mana Flow Band and stuff that helps with your mana, because Malphite's mana is very bad, as you've seen this game. Um, but yeah, you, you always run Arcane Comet. You never not run it. So Malphite actually could be in trouble. He's basing on a ward. And yeah, this is Korea Challenger play. Still basing on a ward. Will ult away. Hecarim chasing with the ultimate. And the Malphite will go down. So that is quite unfortunate for the ward. Uh, sorry, Malphite. But again, he was basing literally on top of that. So... That shouldn't probably happen in Korea Challenger play, but it still does. Runes to the Mordekaiser. Conqueror. Triumph. Alacrity for that attack speed. We will, by the way, see this guy build some attack speed. It's the it's the more modern Mordekaiser build with Last Stand, which he hasn't had to use at all this game. Bot lane is dead. And then also Domination. Taste of Blood. Ravenous Hunter for healing. And then Adaptive Damage, Adaptive Damage, Magic Resist. So there we go. Uh, but yeah, we will see the mod by some attack speed. Um, the modern day Mordekaiser build is actually running Nasher's Tooth. Um, it's actually quite a strong item on him because it can it can do a lot of things. Helps with your conqueror, helps with your passive, helps with um, obviously just smacking people in the face. Um, and yeah, it helps with tower pushing if you're going to split push. It's pretty good. Um, some I have seen some mods rush it first item. I don't think this Mordekaiser is, but we'll see. 
Um, so you also, whoa, ult is happening. That is most likely to slow down the Malphite so then his team can catch up to finish off the kill if they can so happen to finish it off. And he is dead. So yeah, Malphite once again mispositioning. Good ult by Mordekaiser to keep him in the area and uh, not bad at all. Um, so yeah, Lucian again as an update. This team, um, so Dominus Esports apparently won no points to qualify for Worlds from spring or summer this year. So that's quite rough. Um, and that does show how different pro play is. This is the rank one solo queue player on, I guess, the worst competitive Korean pro team. Does show that they are different. They are vastly different. Draven, yes, is doing the Mirror Mana build. Um, and is, you know, doing pretty well, but worth noting, he's it, it's a, it's an early game lane bully character versus an early game lane bully character. So maybe Draven's like, I can kind of get away with it a bit more. Maybe that's his thought. And he's already had a pretty good early game. But uh, not bad. Mordekaiser, though, as we can see. Um, or are they, chain are they Chinese? Oh, it's a Chinese team. So it's, what, he's a Chinese player that plays mainly on Korea solo queue. That's weird, isn't it? Or is he Korean that just plays in China but chooses then to still play on Korea? Someone will find out. I got research. See, this is the handy thing when streaming when doing this series. Is um, we get to know information that I normally wouldn't know. But uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Leandris has been picked up, which is what my guess would be. And also, there is the stinger for Nash's Tooth. Uh, already building that attack speed. Doing a bit of jungle clear. Letting the Malphite push his lane back into uh, his own tower. Which will obviously reset the lane. It also gives Mordekaiser a bit more safety because Lee Sin could be here. But no, Lee Sin is bot lane. Big play happening. Silas is teleporting. We can't see the teleport because it's bugged. Malphi has also teleported down. Draven in trouble gets Malphi ulted. Silas doing a bit of aggression. Hecarim in the area. Lulu going to go down. Mordekaiser also teleporting. Malphi actually, sorry, Mordekaiser ults the Katarina. Is going to finish that off. Now has the stats stolen. What can Mordekaiser do? Combined with his Silas, he's going to get that double kill using the Flash Q combo. And I imagine that's probably going to be the fight. Um, maybe. Oh, no, that's Latched. And that will be a Lee Sin dead too. So everybody, all five. That was a 5v5 bot lane at 12 and a half minutes into the game. Again, like I said earlier, obviously, yes, roams do happen on EUS. They happen on NA. But, like, it, the amount that we, we haven't watched that many games on Korea. Maybe five, maybe six games. And most of them have had stuff like this. 5v5 bot lanes at 12 and a half minutes. The top laner TPing bot lane early into the game. It's just crazy. Um, but yeah. Absolutely crazy. So he's going to go back. Probably going to compete that Nashers maybe. Oh no, can't compete against the Fiendish Codex. The second component. Uh, and also worth noting, if you look at the Silas, has actually opted for the not more modern build that Silas's are normally doing. The more modern build is GLP. Um, it, it's actually giving Silas a lot of utility. It, it enables him to slow. And then it, it, a lot of the time helps you land the chain of the second part to his E. He's not doing that. So that's interesting. Mordekaiser are doing more jungle clear though. Currently 503. Very strong. Actually going to take the red. Wow. That's interesting. But to be fair, this is where sometimes our solo queue experience is different to theirs. If you're this jungler, right, and you have the rank one player on your team who is 503 on Mordekaiser, you're probably not going to be that annoyed him taking your whole jungle, including your red buff, because it's like, oh, it's the rank one player and he wants to carry. But if it was in our game, if I was the top laner and I just took my jungler's red, I bet I'd be flamed, right? But it's just the difference. You trust the guy that's rank one. Mordekaiser opening with the ultimate. What can he do? It has to be UK. I, I don't know, but well, I'll confirm. I don't want to talk about it right now. Mordekaiser going to go for that kill. Doesn't end up getting a Malphite. Does flash away. Just. Malphite literally lives with a sliver of health. Um, but yeah, Mord's going to just return to top lane. And... I don't know, he probably, like, if I was this Mord, you know, he's very strong in a team fight. But he's probably just going to stay top lane. Because even in a 2v1 situation, I doubt people are going to be able to deal with him. Lee Sin in bot lane, doesn't get anything. Actually, Silas does get the kill with Lucian ultimate that he stole. Yeah, he ulted away. That's what I said, didn't I? Did I say flash? I meant ult away. 
to the very next day. Waddle, waddle. So Mordecai, what I would say about this Mordecai as his play style, notice how he's always looking for gold, by the way. If he's, he's not just being complacent, he's like, I'm either teleporting to make a play, I'm doing jungle farm, I'm in top lane, or now I'm in mid lane taking the tower and probably the mid lane farm as well. Always looking for gold. That's why right now he has 8.3 thousand gold, the most, most gold in the game by quite a fair margin. Always making money. And now he doesn't want to compete with the XP of a Draven, so he's going to return to top lane. Again, interesting Draven build. I always get very confused when I see especially AD carries by Sanguine Blade. Sanguine Blade is a 1v1 item. So it only gives you the good things like you probably want from Sanguine while near one or fewer enemies. So either you're split pushing by yourself or you're in a 1v1. What, this Draven isn't going to be in a 1v1 this game, right? He's just not going to be. And obviously the stats that Sanguine Blade, Blade give, 55 attack damage, 15% lifesteal and lethality, maybe that that's what they care about. Maybe it's just the raw stats of the item. But I don't know, like, you're buying an item that has a passive and you're not really going to be using the passive that much. I just find it weird. Lulu does go down to the Draven though. And the Hecum goes down to the Katarina with obviously the risky playstyle. And the double kill for the Lucian, so that's going well. And as you can see, Mordekaiser staying top lane, gonna push this in. Leeson also goes down, and uh, yeah, good. What I would say with the Mordekaiser, very good control of the lane, but again, matchup was in his favour. And going for another objective, Draven gets another kill. They they have just basically aced, by the way, the enemy team without the Mordekaiser. But the Mordekaiser not wanting to feel lonely or like left out. He's going to do an objective. So he's pushed top lane in to the tier 2. You can see his lane is in the area of the tower. So instead of like just going back to buy, he's actually doing something productive for his team. He, this is a completely free Rift Herald. He's going to take it. It's very good for his team. He can then go back. He can buy if he wanted to. And then he can look to push. And by the way, what would happen next time? Imagine if his team is here and they're doing that big push. Mordecai himself could be doing a big push. And then he also has Rift Herald. So there's that. Finding the Katarina right on top of her ult set to not let her get away. Katarina is going to do everything she can just to escape. Probably not going to happen, but some misses are happening. Mordekaiser with his big passive, which obviously we can't see, is what gets the kill. And Katarina does go down. Obviously, she doesn't have flash to flash away. So, quite useful to have flash sometimes. Um, who would have thought it? But I'd imagine Mord has a lot of gold right now. Yes, he's got nearly 3,000 gold, everybody. 3,000 gold, and he's not basing yet, um, mainly because he doesn't really need to, even with what he's got right now, he's still pretty much stronger than most of the enemy team, but he should probably go back, and then he could even teleport back to top lane to apply that pressure if he wanted to, um, and if he's looking, oh, he's actually doing more jungle farming, crazy, like, he's denying, like, what you also have to imagine when he's taking enemy jungle, it's also not just giving him gold, it's also taking gold directly away from the Lee Sin, because he can't get it either. Why is Draven going lethality? It's just one of the Draven builds. Draven obviously can do the crit build, or you can do the lethality build, and usually with the Mirror Mana build, you're running lethality. It's for more raw chunk damage. So again, Mordekaiser at this point has over 3,000 gold, and is still looking, nice E, still looking for fights. He might go down here. Flashes away into safety. Silas with a Malphite ult steal. Mordekaiser does go down to the Katarina just. And that will be a dead Mord for the first time this game. But the enemy team get aced. Mordekaiser item build though, by the way. You saw that he bought a Proto Belt, quickly sold it. He's finished his Nashus and then there is also the Riley. So yeah, he had a lot of gold to use. Um, he will be back up in 20. He might teleport over, but I doubt it, because by the time he's up, this push should probably be over. It just depends if they want to continue the push, continue the momentum, if they think they can. Decent on the back foot. Uh, Mordekaiser's about to respawn. They get what? They get both in Hibs. Yep, they get both in Hibs. Mordekaiser teleporting to the bot lane, and they are continuing his pressure. Popping the Rift Herald instantly. Leeson looking aggressive goes down in a 1v4. Silas on the wrong side of the tower, but any moment he should be okay. He's actually tanking the tower right now. And yeah, so they're not going back yet. Oh, Mordekaiser ults the uh, Lucian. 
Lucian is in big trouble uh, problems here. Mordekaiser kills him. Malphite ult doesn't really do anything. Lulu gets hooked by the Thresh. Mordekaiser double kill. 8-1-6. And now the Rift Held continuing into the enemy base. And there are the quits from the blue team. And that is the surrender. So there you go. That is the game. That is what I would say is one of like the typical dominant Mordekaiser game. That what really could this Malphite do? That is the thing. And that is what I'd say Mal Mordekaiser is quite strong with. In really good matchups. There is basically nothing you can do into a 1v1. So the answer may be the Lee Sin may have needed to go top lane to help the Malphite early to try and calm it down. Because there just became a big difference in, well, Mordekaiser's pushing a Malphite in, forcing him to go Oom. There's a farm lead building. And also, because the Malphite was Oom all the time, it gave uh, Mordekaiser free opportunities to teleport to bot lane and not really get punished that much. So it just, that's the matchup. So it's just kind of crazy, but... Yeah, he finishes the game, by the way, with 11.6 thousand gold. Draven just beats him in gold right at the end. But uh, nearing double gold of the of the uh, the Malphite at 20 minutes. That's kind of crazy. But uh, that is going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, that was Mordekaiser. Uh, we are potentially going to watch one more game of this player. Um, and it's a Wukong episode, so I might do that. Because uh, it did look a little bit of a crazy game. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed, throw a like, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.